Hello everybody. I think I've got this up and running the correct way. Um, my name is Amber Gonzalez. I am the education coordinator for ICT SOS. I just wanted to hop on here today and chat a little bit about some online safety tips as well as our prevention education program that we have at ICT SOS. Um, obviously this year has gone a little differently. Um, our numbers changed. The previous year uh, 2018 to 2019 for the school year, um, our prevention education team facilitated our curriculum to 3,352 students, um, all brand new students, um, middle school and freshmen in high school, for the anti-trafficking prevention education that we do. Um, this year, uh, we ended at 3,390 students. Um, and that was right before the shutdown. Um, we finished at one of our last high schools in March, and we had middle school after middle school lined up for the rest of the year, and we weren't able to um, continue in person with schools. Obviously, schools closed. Um, and so that's kind of where our numbers cut off. Um, so we jumped right into figuring out what is this going to look like for the next year. Obviously, we don't really know yet. We're still waiting fully for the school district to to share what that looks like specifically for visitors like us coming into the classroom. Um, but our team during the shutdown has been at home and on Zoom meetings and we have been coming up with creative ideas to um, bring prevention education to students this year, whatever that looks like. We're pretty much coming up with a plan for every scenario. So. Um, it's just really been hard, this whole thing, but I'm actually really excited for what's coming to the kids, particularly in the Wichita area, um, but hopefully across Kansas as well um, this upcoming year and the year after. Um, I wanted to share a few things from the um, Internet Crimes Task Force, actually, some numbers that we had. Um, a few things happened whenever the shutdown came. Um, just to kind of show what the numbers look like of kids online and how at risk they are. Um, in March 8th through March 14, um, the cyber tip line to the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force um, shared 379,107 um, cases or accounts of, or incidents, I should say, of what we would be known as child pornography, um, which we call child abuse material online. Um, that was, again, March 8th through March 14th. Um, then what happened, spring break, the shutdown happened, everybody was at home. I want to show the most significant change. April 19th through April 25th, over a month later, um, type of incidents that we had of, again, what people know as child pornography, but we call child abuse material. Um, there were 1,130,994 incidents of those um, materials being given to the cyber tip line. Um, that is a huge number. Um, and it is something that has changed across the field of what we're seeing with online stuff for kids, um, of them being at risk, of people reaching out to them, of soliciting them. Um, and so I just wanted to give a few tips, I guess, to parents about um, what can we do <laughs> with this. Our kids have are, are still going to be at home for a while. Um, most of us have been online in one way or another as, as we've been home trying to kind of keep busy. Um, this is one of those times where it's so frustrating whenever I tell people this, um, but really the honest truth is talk to your kids, be in communication, be in relationship with your kids, sit at the dinner table. I know you're all together all the time. You have been for a long time, um, but sit at the dinner table and talk about this stuff. Ask them what they're doing online. Look at what they're doing online. Who are they talking to? Um, a really amazing tip that I heard from uh, Detective Heather Human, Sergeant uh, Human now, um, she said that one of the mo more practical things that a family can do is if you have any kind of electronic devices that can access the internet, um, phones, iPads, computers, keep them in a shared space. Um, some of these things that we see online through the cyber tip line, the incidents, the cases that we have of just, you know, these horrible things that happen, um, they are never happening um, in the family living room. 
they're never happening um, with family in the background right? Um, this kind of stuff is always happening in closed rooms, um, behind closed doors, when um, our kids are in private and they maybe are interacting with someone online and they don't realize the dangers. They don't really realize who's on the other side. Um, so keeping a shared space for those kind of electronic devices is a really good practical tip. Um, for families. Um, I will share because I don't want to be on here for too long today. Um, if you haven't already, um, listen to episode two of our podcast. It's called Look for the Helpers, um, ICT SOS. Um, it is a, a conversation that um, Jennifer and I sat down with um, at the time, Detective Heather Human of the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, and she talked more about this. She gave um, a, a lot more numbers, she gave more tips, more advice, things that she has about cases that she wanted parents to know. So I would encourage you to go ahead and go um, listen to that podcast. You can find it on our website, um, ictsos.org um, forward slash blog, um, but it's episode two of Look for the Helpers. So listen to that. A um, couple of things I wanted to say about prevention education. You know, we're really excited about what's coming for this this next year with some of the creative things we can do with curriculum. Um, if you support us in any way, please continue to support us. Um, donate to the organization in any way that you can. We really rely on that. Um, bringing education to kids to help them be safe online, to keep them out of situations of trafficking, to keep them um, in healthy relationships, to encourage them and lift them up. It is just more important now than it really ever has been before, especially with this really, really hard year. Um, so I would just encourage you to continue to, to support us in that way. Um, the other thing is, if you're interested in learning more about trafficking, about what we do, about programs, about the great work that's happening in our city, um, I would encourage you to maybe sign up for our Next Step program. Um, it is a volunteer education program. Really, anybody can go through it. Um, just because you go through the program, Program doesn't mean you have to commit to volunteering with us forever and ever. Um, in fact, a lot of the, the people who come through our class, they end up volunteering with other organizations. Or maybe they do it just because they want to learn more, or they want to improve a skill, or they want to, um, I guess, just have more tools in their toolbox um, when it comes to relationships. And so if you go ahead and email me at amber at ictsos.org, um, or on our website, you can find it under volunteer, um, next step. There's a place where you can fill out an application. Um, go ahead and join us. We'll have some classes virtually this fall. Reach out to me for more information. That's a really good way that you can dive in. If anything about um, anti-trafficking work or what our kids are facing just strikes a chord with you, um, then you're the kind of person that I want to have in that class because I know that you're going to be out there making a difference with us as well. Um, if I need to provide any clarification for some of the things that I said, I don't usually do this kind of thing. Usually that's Jen and she's amazing at it. Um, or if you have questions about something I said or if I can um, give more information please please reach out to me I'm not hard to find you can find me on Facebook um, or you can email me anytime so thank you guys for watching this little video for listening um, go ahead and listen to our podcast get on our website check things out and I hope you just have a really beautiful day